Hey everybody, it's Ed the Old Tech Guy. And today, we've got a Hyundai Elantra that my friend Mike brought. He wants to get his brakes replaced and he wants to also replace his rotors. So today, since we're all about DIY, we're gonna help him out. Let's get started. All right, everybody, the first thing you wanna do is loosen your lug nuts. These are 21 millimeter. We've got a nice big breaker bar for leverage. That should make it easy. We're gonna show Mike how to do that with the big breaker bar, but then after that, we're gonna use our nice hefty hammer drill to take the rest off after we lift it. So for demonstration purposes, with this much leverage, you can easily just put a little weight on it and it'll get loose. So we ran into an issue lifting up the car. We found out that we, we could not locate a center point to jack the car up. If you run into that, remember you have a pinch weld all along the car, usually strong enough to lift the whole car. So, or that side of the car, I should say. So you need to build something. You, you'll see it all the time on the internet. They'll use a hockey puck and they'll cut in the middle, but some of us don't play hockey and don't have access to a hockey puck. So I grabbed a regular two by four and cut about a half inch slit into it. Um, this was enough to lift the car on one side and should work just as well as the hockey puck. All right, here we are under the car and you've got this, this portion here that shows you where your jack point is in case of an emergency. Right along here, you can lift the rest of the front of the car. Here's the piece of wood that we made earlier. We're just gonna pop it here and we're gonna have the jack slide in. And here you go, this is what it looks like. And go ahead and lift. All right, so after you lift your car, always put your car on jack stands. You don't want, uh, you don't ever want your car to fall. You should never trust the jack. Jacks have weak points that can go bad. There's some shims in here that are 10 cents that if they go, the, the whole jack will fall. And this is what it should look like, guys. Lift it up with a piece of wood. Now you've got your jack stand right in that point. And that's how it should look. Car's up in the air. Time to get the wheels off. Start on them brakes. Mike, go ahead and get show how to take that tire off. You gotta give it a good kick. There you go. We're in the rust belt, so sometimes you gotta give it a kick to come off. This is usually what's real good for these Phillips. If you see the Phillips right there, You'll see it right here and right here. They're a bear to get off once the rust is started. Sometimes people heat them, beat them. I found that this works for me using this. So this is, op this is always option number one for me. I'll always try this first. So guys, wish me the best here. Hopefully it'll work. Oh, just like butter, look at that. All right, and that's how you do it. All right, now that the wheel's off and the Phillips head screws are off of this rotor, you wanna turn the wheel or, or the steering wheel towards the way you're working. So Mike, go ahead and turn it some more till it stops, all the way towards us till it stops. All right, the reason why you wanna do that is you wanna get easy access to all the bolts in the back. The next step, Make sure you have these type of tools. We've got some ratchets. I really like this ratchet here. It has that extendable neck that can, that can go out farther. I like that. Some sockets, metric, and your wrenches that you're gonna need. And right now I'm using everything Pittsburgh except for this guy, this is a power torque. You're also gonna need a hanger. Just get a hanger, make it like this. You're gonna need it to hang the caliper right off of the, the body of the car. And that's a 14 millimeter right there. And there she goes. I'm gonna put these on the side here. 
push in the caliper just a bit and I'm gonna slide it out. There you go. Now that tongue up there, that's protecting the brake line, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't hang or stretch. Maybe we can get this a little bit higher here. There you go. It looks like that's a uh, 17 millimeter. These can be pretty tight, which is why I don't I don't use this size ratchet. I will go to a, my extendable here, get myself my leverage. <sighs> there you go. Next. That would have been hard to do with this much leverage. This is a lot better. Great tool from Harbor Freight. Can't beat it. And here it comes off. That guy with the brakes intact. Good to go. Now comes the comes the fun part, getting this guy off. Alright, next. Gotta hit the disc. Try to spray a little bit of PB Blaster first, right around the rim. Let me take you around. Right around the rim, and in those, in those uh, where you took out the Phillips, hit it with some PB Blaster, let it sit for, for a little bit. And there you go, she's off. Next thing we have to do is grab, Mike, why don't you take out that uh, rotor from that box there. All right, and you'll notice that the rotor itself is in a plastic bag, but more importantly, it's got this layer of grease or oil once you have your new rotors you got to go ahead and make sure you you get them and you get brake parts cleaner give them a good spray rag please and give them a good wipe you want to get all that oil off of them you want this hole right here to match these holes right here. So you gotta look for this pattern that's nice and close from the stud to the screw, stud to screw. Much harder to do on camera, guys. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, now you wanna take your, your screws and put them back in here to hold the rotor, just like the factory had it. This is a step you can skip if you want. I do it because I like to leave things the way I found it from the factory. Take a little bit of anti-seize. There you go. Get yourself your drill bit. get it started now again this isn't a critical part to holding the rotor on here 
Um, so putting anti-seize is perfectly fine. I wouldn't suggest you putting anti-seize on too many parts on your brakes. This is one for sure that nobody's gonna get mad at you for putting it on. <clears throat> and we'll give it a few hits with this guy. There you go. Now we know she's tight. And since we were playing around with anti-seize and these uh, uh, on this brake rotor here, let's give it another spray real quick. We don't we want to make sure that we don't have anything that's going to cause any type of slippage on the brakes. Okay. There you go. Nice. Okay, now we want to compress the calipers so that, that the new disc and the new pads fit perfectly. In order to do that, you have to go ahead and loosen up your brake fluid reservoir. As you can see, this has been pulling or causing suction in. We're going to go ahead and lift it up. And you want to also take a look at the amount of brake fluid that you have. Right here, we're at the max. And I suspect that once we start compressing it, I may have an overflow. So depending on your situation, you may need to suck some of that out. We'll have to make that determination as we start squeezing or, or compressing the caliper. Now to compress the caliper, they sell special tools for that. And you can, you can absolutely purchase those tools if you want. But in order to save some money, you can also do it the way I do it, which is take one of these brakes. And these guys are on pretty good, aren't they? Take one of these older brakes. And for your safety, so you're not breathing this stuff in, hit a little bit with brake cleaner. Kind of kill that dust. And then what you want to do is you just want to put it on top of the, the caliper like that. So this is my setup. I've got my clamp here. Got it on this bottom bolt here. This, you got to be careful with that. Don't, don't overstress this. The old brake is here. And all we have to do is start clamping or turning this clamp clockwise. And there you go. That should, that should clamp it all the way down. We'll check our reservoir, make sure we don't have any leaks. And we'll go to our next one. Just a little bit like that will go a long way. Just take it out, put it on the side. Make sure that doesn't overflow. Okay. Now we have to rebuild this guy. Okay. You want to go ahead and take these shims off. I usually take them off and put them down the way I took them off so I remember how they went. They can go on either side. There's no particular way. I just do it for my own sanity. The other thing you want to do is take that caliper slide out completely. And you want to do two things. You want to inspect the grease, if there's grease, and you want to inspect the boots. Make sure there's no cracks, no rips, and if we've got new boots, we'll replace it with new boots. Mike, do we have new boots? No new boots? That's okay. So, you want to take your brake parts cleaner again. Give this all a good blast.
give it a good wipe where those slides are gonna or those shims are going to be placed what I'm calling shims are these You can also take a wire brush to it, clean it up pretty good. And <clears throat> you also wanna take some brake cleaner to this. Give those a good cleaning. And while you're cleaning, inspect for any burrs or anything that would not allow for an easy sliding action. When you get a whole hardware kit, you'll also get these guys. You want to replace those and they only go in one way. There's a tapered end. You want that tapered end to go down on most cars. So now we get the, the lubricant. We're going to use some silicone gel here, um, Silglide. Put that on there. This is one part of your brakes. You need a lot of grease. Don't be scared to put too much. This is good, this is what it needs. And bam, there you go. Greased up. Good for the next 30,000 miles. Now we need the clips. Now for the brake pads, we went to Hyundai, genuine brake, genuine brake parts here. There's a part number. And this is right from Hyundai so that we know we've got everything we need. A little bit here on your finger. You want to put that there. Any metal on metal contact, you want to you want to put a little bit of this lubricant on. So now we got the slides on. All right, make sure you, you put a little grease here. Again, you're not gooping that up, just, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way right here, okay? A little more grease. Remember, this grease, when, when your brakes get super hot, starts splattering everywhere. You don't want to get that all over your, your braking system or, or the contact points. You don't want, you don't want that to, to ruin your braking uh, uh, situation, right? With the, with the fiber of the pads getting grease on there, on this disc, it could, it could uh, uh, make it so that you don't stop as fast as you need to stop. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is put your brakes on here on this caliper holder, right? Remember I told you you got these clips that hold it. So you're gonna you're gonna slide in first here, and then you're gonna push in here. Just like that. Now, these guys, these guys all come with these, um, these type of guys, and they hold these type of uh, retention springs type, but I don't think they gave us any. So we're gonna use the old ones, and that should be okay. 
all these do is make sure that the, that the, the brake pad stays separated and we'll, we'll put it together like that. Okay, so the only other place I like to put a little, and I mean a little grease, is right here on these, on this guy there. I don't want any rust to build up there. And just a little bit of grease will provide a little bit of protection. So the next thing you want to do is just hang it here, right? You can start threading in your bolt, it's these big bolts here that we, we took off a bit ago. Just start threading them in. All right, something that I was taught a long time ago is if you want something hand tight, you only use the head of the ratchet like this. If you want medium strength, again, not necessarily a specific torque because everybody's strength is different, but if you want a medium amount of strength, just go here in the middle and that'll give you some strength or a sense of getting it tight. If you want ultimate strength, where warning, you could break the bolt, you could break the aluminum, you could break the metal, whatever it is, you go here in two hands, right? Now, everybody has different amounts of strength. You may want to look for the specific torque spec and be happy with it. I just use the, the, the method I've always used and I put it right there. And that's the strength it needs. And I'll bet that's probably right around 80, 80 foot pounds. This is not all my body weight either. That's me feeling how the bolt is reacting to, to me putting weight and pushing down on it. I can tell how locked it is. And that's good. As a matter of fact, I've seen shops, they just take a gun to it and just go right in and full strength. They, they're not torquing it. They never check for torque spec. So again, don't beat me up over, over it, uh, internet. I'm, I'm just a guy showing how to do it. All right, next. We have gotten to the fun part. Putting our caliper back on. Now, this, this can get challenging sometimes, but all you, all you should be able to do is slide it right in. But before you do, my suggestion is, you rest it here. My suggestion is you take a little bit of that grease. Just like that, no more than that, okay? Again, I'm not telling you to use tons of grease. Rub it around this guy. Now there's a reason why I'm telling you to do this because here in the rust belt, brakes tend to squeak a lot. Here, right, in, right up in here where metal touches. Again, not a lot, not a lot. You'll notice that I'm doing thin coats thin coats. That's all you need is a thin coat. Okay. Probably want to hit this up here with the stuff that you've already got on your hand. Just like that. And then you just want to push your, push your brakes together. And sometimes these, these caliper slides will fight against you, but just push them in a little bit and there you go. Take your smaller bolt and thread her in by hand. Do not start taking a ratchet to this or a gun to it. 
start always start your your bolts by hand and you won't strip them when you're putting them back on now again this is exactly the size I need to put the strength that I need on it 14 millimeter I'm righty tighty And there you go. And that's probably torqued to anywhere about 40 foot pounds probably. But you look up your own torque spec and you follow it. After you've compressed your calipers, you wanna make sure that you're not overflowing here. If you are, I showed you before how to take that out with a turkey baster. Make sure you're not overflowing. As you, as you compress each one, check, or have somebody stand here and check for you. If you start coming up, obviously, like I said, take it out with a turkey baster. Don't let it hit all over your engine. It'll strip the paint, it'll cause problems. Okay, so now all we have to do is have Mike go in his car. After we've checked this reservoir, this brake fluid reservoir, we need to go ahead and have him pump the brake 10 times Make sure that the fluid goes down. He's pumping it now. Okay. That was 10. Let go of the brake. Yep. And we look good. We're still a, a bit above the max line. And we are fine. That's exactly what you want. Just start them off by hand. All right, so this is a torque wrench. We're finally gonna torque something down. Turn this backward all the way out. And what we want to get to is 100 foot pounds, which is right there. Between 180 foot pounds is what you, you want your tires at usually. Check your car specs for what you should have. What you want to do is get that zero right on the line of the hundred. You can get this type of click torque wrench pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. All right, now that it's set, we're going to tighten up the rest of the bolts. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to tighten these up as best you can while the car's still raised. Okay, so that's nice and tight. Do that to the other side. You drop the car, then you torque it. Now we just want to go ahead and tighten. So we get that satisfying click. Okay, last but not least, after you replaced your brakes, front or back, you got you need a break-in period. To speed that break-in period, all you really have to do is drive your car as fast as you can and hit those stop signs hard. All right, everybody, it's Ed, the old tech guy, showing you how to replace your own brakes. I hope this is useful for somebody. Thanks to Mike. Um, thumbs up here. There you go. <laughs> I'm not showing faces on my video. <laughs> so thanks everybody. I hope you have a good one. And remember, if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, throw a comment in there. I'd really appreciate it. Take care.